So, hi, I'll introduce myself. First, I'm David Gilbert, Director of Block Projects, um, and I'll let you introduce yourself, Emma. Yeah, I'm Emily Kempster, and I'm a third year fine art student. Great, thanks for joining us today, Emily. The idea of these uh, interviews is that we've just got a bit, bit of background for people who are visiting the online show. So, of course, your, your main degree show has been online this year. Uh, and hopefully to promote you and, you, you and your work as well to audiences at Block. So, uh, could you tell us just maybe a little bit about your background, Emily, and how you come to be studying fine art at Sheffield Talon? I'm quite local. I'm only from Rotherham, and I've just always had an interest in arts and creating, even from being quite young. And how I've ended up coming to Hallam, it was quite a close local uni that I've seen a lot growing up, and I've always wanted to go there. I ended up specifically doing fine art because obviously it's quite broad and you can sort of choose your own path rather than being set out with strict tasks, I guess. In terms of um, you becoming an artist then, what's, what's your experience of university been like then? Has that kind of changed your practice a lot or, or encouraged yeah. you to think about different aspects to your practice? I'd say before, I'd say I only... I pretty much did exclusively draw like realism and stuff and I still do that from time to time mainly for commissions now but I do a lot more sculpture work now and obviously this last year I've started working a lot more with video as well which I've never done before and it is a lot of things that I'd never have considered like saying six bottom and that. So uh, the piece that you've actually made is the degree show um, it's represented as kind of video of the install, I guess, and some stills on the Block Project's website. Um, but are you, are you able to share the film of it that, uh, that we have there? And this is the video of the installation alongside the actual video in the room. Containing ground, outdoor, okay, building there. material, paving. A picture containing sitting, container, green. And it Standing. also uses AI for the text containing that it's ground, producing. Building, floor, sidewalk. A picture containing ground, outdoor, concrete, cement. A picture containing building. That was kind of particularly interesting the, in the chain and what that represents. Ground, You've got, kind of got to, uh, the text projected onto the wall with a shadow of the chain cast onto it. Yeah, the idea was to be linking it to location specific because I think how I originally got to it, I started collecting found materials out of the canals in Sheffield and like the history associated with them. And obviously with Sheffield being like a steel city and it's got a lot of industrial background, I thought I could try and link some form of chaining and they're just collected can pulls that I've collected over the year and got uh, my dad to collect as well. And the idea was it's linking the text and the location to actual like real life places rather than just floating in space. Right, so I didn't I didn't get that initially from looking at the video, but it's all uh, all the pulled hops of uh, of cans. Yeah, that's a pretty massive endeavour to <laughs> put yeah, that together. Yeah, a few thousand in there. <laughs> wow, that's that's quite amazing. So so they're all from locations which relate to the, the video, is that right? Yeah, all of the masks are taken from photos around Sheffield and obviously all the drinks because I live in Sheffield now are also from there. So I wanted to tie in the idea of waste and location. So it has some sort of space in place. Right. So how did your work change uh, or did, did your work change how you were thinking about it uh, in relation to COVID then and the, the lockdown, obviously the masks are a thing that, yeah. <laughs> that we wouldn't have seen before, <laughs> or not so many. Anyway. Well, it sort of did and it didn't, because before, like, again with the canals, I was finding found objects anyway that had been discarded and it just happened that this were right at the start of lockdown and COVID and I just started collecting the images of masks rather than actual like rocks and like bits of iron and steel and like slag and stuff from the canals it just naturally progressed to then collecting images, I think. So obviously like the topic has changed, but 
the materials not so much. So it's still all found stuff. So is this a, a good approach you would continue to use, do you think? Uh, I mean, hopefully the pandemic will end and we'll get back to some kind of normality. Is this kind of a, a working method that you think you'll continue to, to use in future? Yeah, I find it quite effective, to be fair. But it's never something I would have considered before. And so, uh, but I think that's a really interesting piece of work. I, I, I didn't get. Uh, it's quite difficult to represent it just online, I guess, as well. It's it? hard to show it online, especially because the install it's two screens and then the chains in between. So, I, is the install actually at the university? Then? Is that is that how you would have installed it in the in the degree show? Had yeah. it been a physical show? Yeah, I'd have built like a box type room that was dark. And then obviously the audio is playing and you walk in and there's just the two videos either side. But obviously I couldn't do that with everything so far. So I guess it's been a bit of kind of limitation in terms of what, what was possible, wasn't there? Um, yeah. But uh, it's great that you've kind of been able to follow through it's a sort, of, sort of very intensive period of collecting apart from anything else to, to put that piece of work together, isn't it? Yeah. So what, what, what do you hope people seeing the work will take away from it or how they how, how they'll respond to it? I guess it's sort of a self-reflective piece where obviously if you were in person seeing it you'd look up close and you'd see the light reflecting off all the can pulls and it's just the idea of excess and what can be deemed as valuable I guess because everything in there is just throwaway. it's discarded masks, discarded bits of rubbish from cans or just text that were automatically generated. Because, yeah. So that, that kind of uh, a bit of social critique there of the, the kind of society that we live in today? Or? I guess, sort of. And just in general, being more aware. Hmm. So you made what is a pretty uh, labor intensive piece of work so really really kind of quite quite an ambitious piece of work uh, what are you planning to do once you've graduated or now that you have or pretty much graduated yeah. what's your what's your plan for the future is there anything coming up i'm going on to do a pgce in primary teaching after this but in the meantime i've got quite a backlog of commissions that i need to be doing right so yeah you've got a, a sort of a commercial aspect to your practice as well haven't you yeah I generally I do still quite enjoy doing realism in like painting and traditional pencil drawing as well and they're what I've got commissions in so far and it's like off places and people pretty basic stuff but good income <laughs> yeah so do you think that that's something you're going to continue to do alongside developing yeah. the kind of work you to do for your final show yeah I think I will definitely continue it because it's something I enjoy and obviously you get an income from it, which is great. <laughs> well, uh, not, not many artists would turn down an income from making art. But... <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, thanks very much for talking to me today. Um, it's been really, really interesting to hear about your work and um, how, it, how it came about as well, which, uh, which is really interesting to hear about. I, I, I didn't get all of that from just seeing the, seeing the video. It's hard all, to see but... online. <laughs> So uh, thanks again and uh, all the best. Thank you.